So here it is, people. The 144th scale high grade Universal Century Sazabi. So now let's take a look at how everything turned out in some close up shots. can see I did those thrusters down in there with the yellow and the detailing. And I think it turned out pretty good. I also did detailing all on the back there. All the yellow in there is done with paint. And there's one thing I really hate about this kit. This leg does not want to stay on. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just mine or what. But it is really starting to irritate me. At any rate, you can see all the thrusters down there in the feet. And all the details I've done on the feet. More side skirt boosters. And if I raise this up, you can see a lot of the line detail I added down in that area. Under the skirt there. Moving on. If this stupid leg would stay on. The thrusters in the shoulders there. Painted in yellow. And they look good. The beam rifle again with black details up here where it's like I don't know the muzzle where you know the energy can come out sort of and then in the other little details I put gray to sort of mimic like an inner frame type thing. Did yellow on that front piece. Did uh, some black detailing down in those bottom areas and even uh, underneath the skirts there. This uh, decal went on rather well. It didn't really give me any troubles and I didn't actually do anything to it and it ended up looking pretty good. As you can see the border is slightly noticeable when you really look but from back here, you really can't tell. Um, that, however, is not the case here on the shield. You will see all sorts of problems with this shield. I'm not happy with the way this decal turned out. But I have kind of a story slash excuse for why it turned out that way. I was in the middle of doing another kind of experimenting procedure for a different project that I was going to be working on in the future and it required me to be using um, some of this clear blue. However, when I opened it up I noticed that it was really thick so I added some uh, thinner and I had to mix it up and for whatever reason this stupid thing of paint decided it was going to spill all over the decal sheet. Yeah. So that was not fun. I had to try and hurry up and clean that off. I got it clean enough, just fine. Uh, however, this shield decal really started peeling off. And there was no way I was going to be able to get it back on the sheet because it was soaking wet with thinner. Anyway, I, I didn't have anywhere else to put it, so I figured it was okay, it was salvageable, I was going to just put it on there. And uh, I had to hurry it up, though. And I kept trying and trying and trying to just orient it properly. And um, at first glance, that orientation may seem pretty good. But then look, if you will, down 
this line at the bottom of the shield. The decal does not line up with it very well at all. And uh, also, if you were to look on the manual itself, you would notice that the positioning of the decal is lower than where I have it. Which is another unfortunate uh, problem that arose from trying to do this in a hurry. So I never got a chance to do my decal trimming and uh, I just had to sort of use it as it was. Which is unfortunate because now it doesn't look too good. However, in the future I may do something like buy an extra set of decals or something and uh, try to redo it or um, I don't know, try to make the best of this one. And I suppose it's worth noting though that if you look you can see those scrape areas and what I tried to do is use this paint this type of acrylic water-based paint that I normally use on my models and I thinned this down just a little bit and applied it on all the areas that were getting scratches on it because as I was positioning it and repositioning it it ended up getting a few scratches on there which you just saw and so I put those little bits of paint on there and it does help conceal them to a degree but until you look closely you can see how bad it is and um, that's just one more reason why I'm a little unsatisfied with that at any rate I'd have to say that is the worst problem that this model faced except for this leg that keeps wanting to fall off otherwise um, the model is pretty good good quality and everything anyway moving on with a closer look at everything you can see on the shoulders there I did all those vents and things and the head which I showed in one of the earlier parts of the tutorial turned out very nice the green eye in there I painted that eye of course inside the shoulders you'll see where I added some of that lining wash that I use in various different parts of the model and it worked very well for such areas gave them a lot more detail and makes them stand out better and this frickin leg I swear to god you know I've tried using my blue tack technique for that kind of joint it turns out for whatever reason it doesn't work too well with this kind of joint it may just be too heavy or something and it's not gonna hold well so that's one limit to that technique it won't work on something like this unfortunately so what I may end up having to do is use some kind of wood glue or white glue Elmer's glue and uh, I can use that and put that around the poly cap and the ball joint and then assemble it and let it dry and then once it is dry then you can sort of loosen it up break it up and uh, then you'll have a more snug joint so I guess that's one final little tutorial but I have never done it actually so I can't say it works for sure I just know other people recommend it anyway this wasn't really intended to be much of a real review but more just to sort of show you the fruits of my labor here and to sort of uh, show you that with the tips and tricks I've shown over the last several tutorial videos you can wind up with a model that looks pretty much like this but more than likely it'll turn out better if you don't end up spilling paint all over your decal sheet like me anyway um there is one thing to note about a model like this for its scale it is very very big to serve in as an example here is my yellow custom model that I entered for the too old for toys competition 
they are side by side directly he is huge and to really give you an even better perspective of just the size of this thing here is the master grade shining Gundam a 1 100 scale kit and granted the stance that he's in is kind of wide there which shortens him a little and granted the fact that Shining Gundam is not a very large Gundam to begin with and yet you can see even side by side Sazabi is the slightest bit taller right now I mean that's crazy for a 1 1 44th scale kit so that's pretty cool and uh, something to make this, uh, the Sazabi feel a little smaller though here is the Master Grade Zeta Gundam version 2.0 and Zeta Gundam is a above average height Gundam and you can't even really see it can you there you go now Sazabi is considerably shorter, as he should be, being a scale smaller. But still consider how close they are in terms of overall size and bulk and everything. It's really crazy how big this kit is for its scale. And I can only imagine how huge the Master Grade would be. However, seeing as the Master Grade is not one of Bandai's greatest models. This is why I decided to pick up the high grade instead. I heard that it was better, better proportion, better quality. Um, the test of time just produced a better model overall. And uh, I have to um, say that this certainly seems better. It is disappointing to have to do so many of the yellow details yourself however that's also true for the master grade so that's no knock against it specifically but what is is this stupid leg and I swear to god I am really getting irritated with it but that aside um, I don't plan to be posing him too much so it's not really a big issue for me. I'll just set them up next to some of my other Xeon kits, and that'll be that. So anyway, guess we're out of time now, so until the next video...